and welcome to lesson 22.2 in the Python tutorial series. Today we're going to continue what we started in 22.1 and look at some more advanced string methods. What makes the string methods we look at today a little bit different than the last one is what we're going to evaluate is Boolean string methods. There's really only four of them, but they're string methods that are going to return either true or false depending on different conditions. Uh, the methods that we're going to look at are starts with, ends with, is alpha, and is numeric. All four of those will return a true or false, whether a string starts with a certain letter, ends with a certain letter, whether it's all alpha characters like letters, or whether it's all numbers. This makes doing some error checking a lot easier, particularly in asking the user if they want to continue and keep going, where you might get a wide variety of answers where a user might type a Y, uh, a capital Y, a lowercase y, they might type yes. Uh, they can really do a lot of different responses and using these string methods can make it so that the user is definitely inputting something that we can recognize. Then we're going to uh, take this and apply it to the beginnings of a really cool adventure game that will allow us to take full strings from the user, parse it out, and see what the user is asking us to do. So let's go ahead and get started with the Boolean string methods in lesson 22.2. Okay, so here we are. We've got our Python shell open, and we've also got a uh, programming window open here. And over on the right-hand side of the screen, I'll put up an explanation of the four different string methods that we'll be evaluating here. The thing that is common among all the string methods we're looking at today is their Boolean string methods, meaning they're always going to return a value of true or false. If you've been following along the series, you'll find that this is probably a very simple concept. So to get started, let's go over to our programming window and ask something that we've done, uh, or and do something we've done a lot, ask the user to enter a number. I'm gonna set the variable number equal to input, enter a number. Now we've done this in a lot of different things, uh, the guess the number game, and some of you use this in your method or in your program for rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock. We're asking the user to enter a number and we want to know, are they entering a number or are they entering other characters? If I were to run this program right now and enter, let's say uh, one, two, three, four, five is my response. Number now contains the string one, two, three, four, five. Like those other string methods that we looked at in lesson 22.1, is alpha and is numeric can be run on any string variable. So if I were to say number dot is alpha, I want to see are there any characters that aren't number, or is this string completely made up of alphanumeric characters, of no numbers at all? When I run number is alpha, I get false. Similarly, if I ran number is numeric, I'm getting a return value of true because that string contains nothing but numbers, so is numeric is true. When I apply this to my program right here, I might do a simple check and say if number dot is numeric, then print you have entered only numbers. Otherwise, I'm going to print, you may only enter numbers. So this check right here, if it returns true, we'll get the message, you've entered only numbers. If the user enters anything other than just a string of numbers, it's going to force it to this else statement. So if I execute this program here, and I enter a number and we say one, two, three, four, five, my program correctly identifies that I've entered only numbers. But if I entered, say the word house, it's going to tell me that I can only enter numbers. This also works if I mix up numbers and letters together. If I enter a number and I say 12 Y, maybe I hit the wrong key, it's still going to identify that as an error because is numeric will only return true if the entire string contains nothing but numbers. By using is numeric in your checks, it becomes a lot simpler to make sure that the user is only entering numbers when you want them only to enter numbers and only entering letters when we want them to enter letters. 
Now we won't write a program for this over here, but let's say we'll set a uh, variable letters equal to the string of house. The string letters contains only alphanumeric characters. So just like is numeric worked on numbers, if I were to say letters is alpha, I'm going to get a return value of true. And if I get letters is numeric, I'm going to get a return value of false. I'm going to set one more variable, and we'll just call this one x for simplicity. x is going to be equal to the string 12y. When I evaluate 12y using is alpha and is numeric, x is alpha, returns false, and x is numeric, also returns false. When you have a string that mixes numbers and letters together, both is alpha and is numeric will always return false. Another common mistake that is made with is numeric is you have to keep in mind that we're looking at string values and only string values. You cannot run a string method on an actual number. The reason that is numeric worked on my number variable up here is because the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 was actually saved as a string. If I were to set number equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, number is now an integer as opposed to a string. And if I run number is numeric, it will cause my program to return an error. We'll say int object has no attribute is numeric. These are specifically for strings and evaluating strings, so we can't evaluate integers, floats, and other types of data with is numeric and is alpha. This will only work on strings. Now that we've had a chance to look at is numeric and is alpha, let's erase this program here on the right hand side. We're going to change this and instead we're going to look at starts with and ends with. So let's write a function over here. Um, we're going to call it keep going. This would be a function that we would use maybe if we were going to prompt the user to either continue playing a game or not. So in this function, I'm going to add my comment and, says, and say, this function asks the user if they'd like to continue. And in this function, we're going to get a response from the user. And this will be set to a value of input would you like, whoops, would you like to continue? And we'll have a Y and an N as possible responses. And so the user is going to input whether or not they'd like to continue playing our game. Now, if response dot starts with the string Y, just like is numeric and is alpha, response dot starts with will, res will return a boolean value, either true or false. This is going to check, does response start with a Y? It can be any word, any string of any length, but if it starts with a Y, we're going to return true. So if that's the case, um, just for the sake of debugging our program, we're going to print got a yes. And what we would probably have is a return value of some sort some sort if we were using this in an actual game. But for right now, if the user types anything that starts with a Y, we're going to get got a yes. Elif response dot starts with N, we're going to print got a no. Now, just like we did with the uh, starts with for N uh, for Y, if the string, whatever the length of the string the user enters starts with an N, we're going to get a true from starts with N. So if the user types in anything from N or no, or they type, they type out the whole word no, this is still going to return true and print got a no. In all other cases, we know that no usable answer was entered. And let's run this program and see how it works. So over here, I'm going to run keep going. Would you like to continue? And I'm just going to enter a lowercase yes. And we can see that the program identified that we got a yes. 
if I run this program again, or I guess I didn't need to run this program again, but let's uh, test it again. Would you like to continue? I'm going to type out the entire word yes. In this case, because yes starts with a lowercase y, we're still getting the print statement got a yes. Similarly, if I were to say keep going and enter n, my program will identify that I got a no. In the same way, if I entered no as an entire string, because no still starts with an n, I'm going to correctly get the message got a no. And then everything else that I could possibly enter, keep going, let's try a q, we get no usable answer. Keep going with a one, no usable answer. By using starts with, we can get a better picture of what our user is entering really quickly. Now remember in the last lesson I said you could also use different string methods on top of one another and they would execute from left to right. One thing that we might want to do is add some methods to make this even a little bit more accurate. What's going to happen if I run keep going and I enter an uppercase Y, I'm going to get no usable answer was entered. That's because my response is looking for only a lowercase y. But it's possible that my user is going to enter a, an uppercase y, and that would throw this whole system out, off. However, I can adjust that. I can take the response and add lower, then dot starts with a lowercase y. What will happen now if the user enters an uppercase y it will check the response, which is an uppercase Y, then make it a lowercase Y, and then check to see if it starts with a lowercase Y. By doing so, it really doesn't matter anymore whether my user has the caps lock on or not. Over here, I can do the same thing, add lower to the response, and if the user enters N, whether it's an uppercase N or a lowercase N, it will still correctly identify the answer. Because if the user uses an uppercase n, response, which is equal to an uppercase n, will be assigned a lowercase value, making it a lowercase n, and then we'll check to see if the response starts with a lowercase n. With this little change to our program, we've got an even more accurate check on whether the user wants to keep going. So would you like to continue? Let's try an uppercase y. We got a yes. Keep going. With a lowercase y, we got a yes. And it works if the user types in all upper, uppercase yes, keep going, uh, and all lowercase yes also works. And it would even work if the user wrote in something like, yeah, because yeah still starts with a y, we're going to get a yes. By using these Boolean string methods, and partnering them with some of the string methods we talked about in Lesson 22.1, you can make a really simplistic statement that checks a lot of different cases. It's far less common to use ends with, end, ends with. The ends with method is the exact same as the starts with method, except it will return true if the string ends with a certain character. So over here you might have a variable and we'll call this uh, variable x and we'll set x equal to, say we'll call it football, and then we can say x ends with l and we'll get a true and x ends with, let's say, a, a capital F and get a false. So. I don't use end, ends with that often in my program. It's got much more limited use. Starts with is a fantastic tool. Uh, ends with definitely doesn't have as much utility, but it's good to know it's there depending on the programs that you're writing. And that's really all there is to Boolean string methods. We've looked at starts with, ends with, is alpha, is numeric in this lesson, and a whole host of other string methods like lower, upper, count, capitalize. What we're going to do now in the next lesson, which will be 22.3, we're going to take all of these string methods together and we're going to write a small sample game. Uh, it will be a text adventure game that will allow us to take full sentence input from our user and 
get a good sense of what the user is asking us to do, no matter what they type or no matter what their grammatical style is or how they phrase things, we'll be able to accurately see what our user is asking us to do. So thank you so much for watching Lesson 22.2 .2 on Boolean string methods. As always, if you have any questions or anything didn't make sense, or you have a program that's not working, feel free to leave those questions in the comments and I will help you out any way that I can. Until next time, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.